Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. I have a lot of people asking to make more earring videos. So here we are. We're going to make a hoop earring with a hexagon shape pattern in this tutorial with the Rhino 3D software for your jewelry design. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are a few components to this earring. Let's take a look. First of all, you of course gonna have a uh, ring post. And then you're also going to have this border. And the main need is how we're gonna arrange the pattern to flow into this shape. So that's starting from a scratch. For this hoop earring, you can do as big as you want. What I like to do is about 20 millimeters. So I'm going to use the arc tool and holding my shift, to draw about three quarter size of the circle. Let's take a look on the ghost view. And then if you see that we need to kind of uh, tilt it this one to get the shape. But if you just tilted this one, for example, using the rotate command, you're going to get something look like this. All right. So if that were for you, that would be fine. Um, what I like to do is I want to use the 3D rotate and we're going to snap in into this point and this point, and then we want to rotate like that. So that will maintain the axis still staying right in the middle. All right. So either shape that will work. I just want to move in this out a little bit. So I have that curve there. If you want to puff here, you just need to rotate a little bit bigger. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to mirror that one to the other side. And then so we have those two, it's going to be our rail. I'm going to turn it into the red color. Then we want to make it puffy. So let's go ahead to use the arc from the start end and the point. We're going to snap it into the end point here and end point here. And moving up depends on how puffy you will like. We're also going to do one more time here and here. And I'm going to make it somewhere like this. So now we have all we need to create in the surface. We are going to do with the sweep to rail. You got rail one, rail two. You're going to go from here to here. And then we'll get this puffy foam. Once we get this one, we can make it flat by create UV curve. And this create UV curve command is going to creating a box. And this is the box for represent this guy if it is stretched and also make it flat. And this is the area. So we're going to design our pattern within this box right here. Let's go ahead to create our honeycomb by polygon command. And we wanted to do click on it and make sure the number of a side is six. And we're going to just draw something look like this. It doesn't matter about the size right now. We're going to change it later, but you wanted to do is kind of a duplicate them. So I'm going to make a copy from this point to this point. And then from there, I'm going to make a copy again from this point to this point. And then you can continue to see how many you want it. Once you like it, just go ahead to moving it from this point to this point and you can 3D scale it down to about here. So maybe I wanted to have five of them. All right. And then within those five, we're going to give in a test to see what is the biggest size somewhere right in the middle and see if that is the size you want. So if I select, if I make this into the surface by using the surface from planar curve, and then I'm going to use flow along surface. And with this flow along surface, this will be the base surface and this will be the target surface. So you can see this is the pattern that you're going to have right there. If that is the size, it worked for you and then we're going to continue to use this. So let's go ahead to delete those. All right. Now you cannot just have they extruded and repeated because there will be no solid left. So what we wanted to do is we need to offset this guy. So I'm going to offset it for something like a 0.8 millimeter and then I will get something like this. So this is will be our cutting tool. Now if this is too small and you do want to like to have your grid smaller so we can change here offset for 0.4 millimeter and offset inside. 
Okay, so let's say this is the size we wanted, and then we want to just make it into the solid by extruded this curve we just offset. So let's go extrude the planar curve straight. Just make them into the solid. All right, so I'm going to move it down so it's intersect with the planar curve that we have. Now let's go ahead to make them into solid and do the bullying. So I'm going to come into the solid, extrude planar curve straight, and I wanted this earring, it's about one millimeter thickness, and so I'm just gonna type it one here, and then so we have this extrusion. All right, that's dealing with the color. I'm gonna turn this into the red color so it's easier for you to see. First of all, I would like to make a bunch of a duplication. So with this one, let's go ahead to make a copy and we wanna use the outside here as a copy. So I got one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so then we have those five as a cutter. Don't worry about those two, it's not cutting into it because we're gonna use it later. And then once you have it, select all of them, and then we wanna do a bunch of a duplication here. Instead of uh, using the copy, I'm going to use the linear array, and we're gonna array, I don't know, maybe 20 of them. And then we're gonna go from here to here. All right, so then you will have all the pattern there. Now, you don't need the one going really in, so I'm just going to delete those. And then you also, maybe I want to delete those because this will be really close to the end. So maybe we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna delete this one, delete this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it's not like cutting into the end. We could go ahead to group all of this and I want them to align to the center. So let's go ahead to do the align vertical centers and make sure you're snapping into the midpoint. So those are right in the middle. Okay, now if you have the pattern, let's go ahead to cut it. We are going to use the Boolean difference and it's going to Boolean different this out of all of this. Okay, so now you can see a bunch of a hole here. Now before you flow this back to here, I will suggest you doing anything. You want to fit it or you want to chamfer, you probably want to do it now, right? So I'm going to give them a tiny fillet so they will look much better on the rendering. So one thing to check is always check if it is still solid and you can click on it and on the right side see your property say close solid poly surface and that would be great. If it is not solid you want to fix now instead of you know try to fix after flow because after flow they will be stretching and then they won't look good, uh, won't be easy to fix. All right, so now we got this one. Uh, we need to flow this back to the surface right here. So let's go ahead to using the flow along surface and we're gonna pick up this object and then we're gonna pick up an end of this one. Uh, we need to pick up a surface. Uh, since the surface is now gone, uh, let's go ahead to do again with the surface from planar curve. So I'm going to mark that surface into the green color I think it will be easier for you to see where I click. All right, so let's go ahead to do it again. We wanna use the transform. You have flow along surface, and then you're gonna pick up this object, and then you wanna click again on this corner. All right, so on the green surface on this corner. So you click on that, and when you come back to the target surface you wanna click, you wanna click on the same corner. All right, so now you flow on it and then let's take a look on the render view and see how it goes and see if this is what you're looking for. If not, you may want to redo your pattern until you find something you want. Let's go ahead to hide the surface and then this is ours. Now I do not like the edges to be like this. So what I wanted to do is I'm going to pick up those curve here. So curve one, curve two, and also this curve and also this curve right there. So now the solid, just those curve and let's turn it back to the ghost view. We have the thickness for one millimeter. So I'm going to just pipe it something I can cover that. So I'm just gonna do the radius for maybe 1.5 and then we'll get something like this. All right. If we take a look on the render view and let's see, you kind of see there's a, still a tiny gap a ring there. It's, it doesn't look too bad, but
But maybe I wanted to do is just moving around for those pipe. Maybe I want them to coming out a little bit, something like this, right? And maybe I want to moving for wall just a little bit like this. So then I do not see, you know, that line there and something will look like this if that were for you. But it's, it's up to you and see how you want to adjust it. Once you adjust on one side, the other side, you can always delete that one and to be symmetrical we want to have this one to mirror to the other side all right i want to spend just a couple minutes to talk about the post right here for the rendering purpose and then you can move this around to make them look nicer once you move others you might want to move around the rest of it all right to cover those gap and things like that but anyway so what i wanted to talk about let me go back to whatever that is so what i wanted to talk about is the post now I won't suggest you to do the post on here and also cast it because you're going to run into a lot of a problem. The post is too soft. That's one thing after cast. And the other thing is the polish issue. So usually you want to start a post, but to make it easier, what I wanted to do is we can put a dip there. So we can do is just having a sphere and can be any of the size as long as it's not too big right and then we want to do something like this and bringing something like this like for example that is where you want to solder your post and then you can do the bowling different this one out of this one so there's a little tip for you to flow the solder and for to solder the post on it if that work for you or you can do a plate you can do whatever that's going to work for you some people will like to do is right at this spot right in the middle and they can do a disc like this right and for about like this thickness or like a 0.8 millimeter and what it does is this will acting somewhere about here let me move it out a little bit something look like look like this so that will be first of all easier for you to start a post the other thing is you will rest on your ear maybe a little bit better instead of like really thin area so that may be something to consider for your production but again it depends on what type of uh, shape that you have and you know if you want to put a disc and depends on the shape that this can be bigger or smaller we can have this one close to the end and something look like that for example all right. I hope you enjoy the video like I do. And if you wanted to learn how to turn in the 2D image into the 3D object, don't forget to participate in this free webinar. The link is in the description below. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching. See you next.